Good morning and welcome to Palm Sunday worship here at the Episcopal Church of Leeds Parish. Today with our Palm Sunday worship we begin Holy Week, a week when we hear the epic story of Jesus entering Jerusalem to the waving of palms and the acclaim of crowds through to Maundy Thursday when Jesus teaches us to love one another as he has loved us to Good Friday when we hear the story of the passion the story of the horrific death of Jesus and then we come together again on Easter Day to celebrate Jesus's resurrection I invite you to worship fully with us please do sing and take today Palm Sunday whatever branches you have found in your own home please wave them and do join us in worship today I remind you that God's ministry and mission is possible only through your generosity. If you can give to support our mission and ministry through the people of Leeds Parish to support God's work in the world, we invite you to give generously. Once again, welcome.
Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Let us pray. Assist us mercifully with your help, O Lord God of our salvation, that we may enter with joy upon the contemplation of those mighty acts whereby you have given us life and immortality. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. <coughs> Glory to you, Lord Christ. When Jesus and his disciples had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest heaven! When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Almighty God, for the acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. On this day, he entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph and was proclaimed as King of Kings by those who spread their garments and branches of palm along his way. Let these branches be for us signs of his victory, and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our king, and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who lives and reigns with you in glory and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of Christ. Amen. Our opening hymn is hymn 154, All Glory, Lord, and Honor.
you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our nature and to suffer death upon the cross, giving us the example of his great humility. Mercifully grant that when he may walk in the way of his suffering and also share in his resurrection, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray the appointed verses of Psalm 31, responsibly by half verse. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eye is consumed with sorrow, and also my throat and my belly. For my life is wasted with grief, and my years with sighing. My strength fails me because of affliction and my bones are consumed. I have become a reproach to all my enemies, and even to my neighbors, a dismay to those of my acquaintance. When they see me in the street, they avoid me. I am forgotten like a dead man, out of mind. I am as useless as a broken pot, for I have heard the whispering of the crowd. Fear is all around. They put their heads together against me. They plot to take my life. But as for me, I have trusted in you, O Lord. I have said, You are my God. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Make your face to shine upon your servant. And in your loving kindness, save me. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is our Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us join together in singing hymn 171, Go 
too dark in Gethsemane. For a few moments, let's try and get back into the emotional space of that parade. We know that even before Jesus arrived, the air of Jerusalem would have been astir with excitement. Thousands of Jewish pilgrims would have poured into the city to get ready for Passover, the Feast of Freedom a celebration that marked the end of their slavery, the exodus from Egypt, the time of their redemption. Children would be everywhere, ingesting the energy that they felt all around them. Families would be busy making the correct preparations for the Passover meal, securing the unblemished lamb for the sacrifice and the dinner, getting all the correct herbs and spices, making sure the unleavened bread was just right, filling the carafes with wine. So when the crowds heard that Jesus was on the way, it added additional drama. We always try to embody some of that excitement, that, that joy in our own Palm Sunday worship. But this year, some things are different. There's a different kind of energy in the air. We can't gather together in person as God's people. We can't distribute the palms as the first part of our worship the way we've done for generations. And yet some things are the same. We sang all glory, laud, and honor. We wave whatever branches, palms or otherwise, we have on hand and here at home. 
We celebrate Jesus' arrival into Jerusalem, shouting, Hosanna! Hosanna! But even though we are now fasting from public worship as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, and we don't know how or when that will end, we can still be honest and admit that we know the next chapter in the life of Jesus. That the hosannas we sing today will turn into cries for crucifixion by Friday. That the sound of celebration exemplified by the branches we wave will soon fade, fade into the sounds of hammer and nails. The sounds of groans and gasps from suffering by the end of the week. As a congregation, we can't pretend that we don't know that the one for whom we spread our branches will be the same one whom we deny, desert, and watch die. We cannot pretend that the cross lurks just around the corner with its smell of death that overwhelms the smell of spring and its sound of silence that swallows up our songs of praise and yet, that is precisely the complicated and chaotic emotional and spiritual space we are meant to inhabit this week. This week when we find ourselves on Palm Sunday and Holy Week unlike any other we have ever experienced. As people who follow God in the way of Jesus, we mustn't choose to skip from the hosannas of Palm Sunday into the Alleluias of Easter. We mustn't move from the parade into Jerusalem right into the discovery of the empty tomb. Try as we might, we can't avoid the rest of the story during this Holy Week. The story that finds Jesus entering Jerusalem, not laughing and shouting with the crowd, but immediately making his way to the temple ready to challenge those who opposed him, those who were threatened by him, those who were already plotting to get rid of him. Starting today, we are asked to endure the final days and the death of Jesus, not as a movie on the screen or a show on the History Channel, but as a changing reality in our lives. We are asked to read and listen to the stories in scripture, and to walk with Jesus and his disciples along the entire way, along the branch-strewn road into Jerusalem, up the stairs to the upper room, pausing in the Garden of Gethsemane, and finally trudging to the lonely hill of Golgotha. We're invited to try to hear this familiar story again as if it were the first time in the hope that we might be changed by it, that our congregation's life might be changed by it. I wonder if some of us know the story so well that even when we don't skip it, we're rather numb to it. As a child, I felt shocked as much by the biblical story my priest way back then told when during his Good Friday sermon from the pulpit, he used a hammer and nails to hammer nails into a piece of wood. I'll never forget that sound in church. It was an awful sound. It was a shock to my little eight-year-old ears. It is that kind of shock, that kind of fresh approach, that kind of innocent amazement into which we are all invited to plunge this Holy Week. For the echo of crucifixion is one of the sounds of the Gospel. It is one of the sounds of our Christian faith. No other world religion worships a God who suffers. Yet for us, the cross, the symbol of God's suffering in Jesus, stands at the center of our faith as a reminder of God's powerful, vulnerable love that was
was willing to undergo everything, everything, in order to show us how much God loves us. The echo of the crucifixion is the sound that proclaims, no matter what, I will undergo everything and anything for you. I will keep on loving you even when you betray me, deny me, and abandon me. I will keep on loving you even when it gets me killed. I will keep on loving you no matter what. I will keep on loving you so that one day you might really believe it. I will keep on loving you until you finally rest in the knowledge that my mercy and grace, my embrace, my forgiveness is what will win. My mercy and grace, my forgiveness, my embrace will always far outweigh your sinfulness or your brokenness or your pain and will continually offer you new life again and again. And again, this is what the echo of crucifixion can signal to us about how deeply we are loved by the one who created us. I still find the echo of crucifixion to be an awful sound. But by this point in my life, I've seen enough suffering, enough death, and enough pain to know that as awful as it is, the echo of crucifixion remains a vitally important sound to my faith. It's the sound that gives me the courage to proclaim God's living presence, even in those moments when the smell of death temporarily overtakes the smell of spring, and when songs of praise seem to be swallowed up by moments of God-forsaken silence. It's a sound that reminds me that even in those spaces, those experiences, even those people, we have been touched by God, claimed and redeemed. Holy Week is not an easy week for us Christians. The walk to the cross and the echo of the crucifixion are gut-wrenching, gut-wrenching moments in our faith. But in our world, particularly now, where people feel completely broken and undone, and the smell of death wafts through our air, more so now than ever, we cannot avoid this part of our faith story. We must not avoid it for, not just for God's sake, but for our sake. We must walk to the cross together. We must witness God's pain, both as the parent who loses a child and as the son who feels God forsaken and dies. Because only after we allow ourselves to remember and ingest those moments of stark truth and gospel will the alleluias of Easter have any chance of being sustained over the course of our lives sustaining power that lasts and takes hold even as the sound of Alleluia begins to fade and the lilies start to wilt. For it's neither a cheap grace nor an empty hope that we find at the end of the story. It's a grace, a hope, a divine love that has both endured and conquered immense suffering, grotesque tragedy, an overwhelming loss, all forever a part of God's story, forever a part of God's very self. Amen. Show your compassion for the whole human family that is in turmoil and burdened with illness and with fear. 
Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Come to our aid as the coronavirus spreads globally. Heal those who are sick, support and protect their families and friends from being infected. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Grant us your spirit of love and self-discipline so that we may come together working to control and eliminate the coronavirus. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Make us vigilant, attentive, and proactive in diseases that create suffering and often result in death for many people. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heal our self-centeredness and indifference that makes us worry only when the virus threatens us. Open ways beyond timidity and fear that too easily ignore our neighbor. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Strengthen and encourage those in public health services and in the medical profession, caregivers, nurses, attendants, doctors, all who commit themselves to caring for the sick and their families. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Inspire, give insight and hope to all researchers focused on developing a vaccine. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Sustain all workers and business owners who suffer loss of livelihood due to shutdowns, quarantines, closed borders, and other restrictions. Protect and guard all those who must travel. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Guide the leaders of the nations that they speak the truth, halt the spread of misinformation, and act with justice so that all your family may know healing. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heal our world. <clears throat> Heal our bodies. Strengthen our hearts and our minds. And in the midst of turmoil, give us hope and peace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Hold in your gentle embrace all who have died and who will die this day. Comfort their loved ones in their despair. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Remember all your family, the entire human race, and all your creation in your love. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray together the collect for the 250th anniversary of Leeds Parish. Gracious God, we give you thanks as we celebrate the 250th anniversary of Leeds Parish and the journey that began so many years ago. We pray that you will deepen within each of us a sense of gratitude for the many sacrifices made for us by those who have gone before us. By faith, may we continue to discern the needs of those around us now and the needs of those who shall come after us. And may we do all that is possible to witness in word and deed the riches of life with Christ. We ask all of this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And, and also with you. Once again, welcome. So glad that you can participate in Palm Sunday worship here at the Episcopal Church of Leeds Parish. I'll just remind you of this week, Holy Week schedule. Maundy Thursday, I believe it's at 6 p.m. Good Friday at noon, yes, thank you. Good Friday at noon, and at Good Friday, we will hear the story of the Passion. As you know, normally the Passion is part of the Palm Sunday service, but that would make for a very, very, very long video worship. So please do join us for Good Friday when we hear again the story of the Passion. And then Easter Day at 11 a.m., please join us as we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord. Once again, welcome. Our offertory hymn is hymn 158, Ah, Holy Jesus, How Hast Thou Offended?
also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For our sins he was lifted high upon the cross, that he might draw the whole world to himself. And by his suffering and death, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who put their trust in him. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
of God, for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith, with thanksgiving. We say together, My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come and at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. Our hymn is hymn number 313, Let Thy Blood in Mercy Pour.
Thanks, Jesus. 